Welcome to Bishop's Roundtable, hosted by Bishop Anthony Thompson. Bishop Roundtable is a weekly program dedicated to giving local community leaders an opportunity to talk about events and situations that affect communities here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Bishop's Roundtable is a production of Kingdom ICDC, the group that ensures positive community development on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Now, here's your host, Bishop Anthony Thompson. Thompson. Good morning. You're tuned in to the Bishop's Roundtable. I have with me a guest, an uh, exciting guest. She has a lot of good things going on. Her name is Fallon Atlas McLean. Uh, and I'm going to have her to introduce herself and tell us some of the things that you're doing and, and, and how did you get back to the Mississippi Gulf Coast and what's your connections? Okay, so currently, uh, right now, I'm working on a, a book. It is called Think Tea, uh, Drink from Wisdom. I'm really excited about that. Um, my mother was here from Mississippi, and um, I kind of allowed the Lord to lead me in this direction. I was led to move back here about... Lord, 13, mm -hmm. 13 years ago now after Katrina, yeah, 2006, yeah. Um, and my passion and, and my desire here, um, and really nationwide, but here first, um, is really to just grow our communities mm -hmm. um, economically, yeah. and so I've, I've been blessed to meet a lot of people, mm -hmm. um, family, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, making these connections happen. Yeah. making that process move forward and being able to talk about it, getting in a space where we can mm -hmm. talk about what's necessary to progress us. Yeah, and you have some good connection uh, uh, as far as mentors. I know uh, I noticed on your Facebook page you have Dr. Miles Monroe. Uh, tell me, what do, you, what do you like about Dr. Miles Monroe? How has he inspired what you do? Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Miles Monroe literally changed the mm -hmm. way I thought. He, yeah, he, changed, he has an uh, impact on people. Yes, yeah. he, he changed um, completely, not mm -hmm. just from a religious standpoint, but he mm -hmm. changed the way I thought about just life as a whole. Mm -hmm. I went to a conference at uh, Zoe Christian Center mm -hmm. uh, in California, mm -hmm. and Dr. Miles Monroe and G. Craig Lewis mm -hmm. uh, were the speakers. G. Craig Lewis, I left there and threw all my CDs away. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was uh, Christ the Antichrist or something like that. And I was like, oh, Lord. Um, and then the next day, uh, Dr. Miles Monroe spoke, and yeah. uh, the message was rediscovering the kingdom. Yeah, and, and that's one of the, I think, uh, as a whole, I think sometimes with the church, we miss the whole kingdom concept. We think, when we think kingdom, I think our concept is completely different of what the Bible means when it comes down to kingdom. But it's not just preaching and teaching and having people born again. We're talking about a whole economical system. Do you think that's what the kingdom uh, operates off of? Absolutely. It, you know, and, and when I say it changed my, it changed everything. Mm -hmm. Because I realized that he was talking about practical. When he mm -hmm. says, when the word says that, you know, Jesus, you know, that a son would be mm -hmm. born unto mm -hmm. us and he'd be carrying a, a government on yeah. his shoulders. It was a system, yeah. a way of doing things, a, a, not just a you know a, an economic system, yeah. a, a, an yeah. entire uh, way to live, mm -hmm. which is what we were lost um, when Adam fell in, yeah. in the beginning. And absolutely, I believe that that's what it is. It's financial, it's health, it's, right. it, it's all of those different things. And yeah. We over spiritualize, if that's okay <laughs> to say. Yeah, and I think we miss it when I, I think that's something that people need to study out a little bit more. When he said the government right. would be on this show, he wasn't talking about this physical government. Not he was talking about the government of the kingdom of God and its principles and how the government is structured. Exactly. And so I think that's what it meant. I think sometimes we, like you said, we always spiritualize that. And so I know that with that concept in mind, uh, I want you to hold that point, but you got involved in some other things, uh, you know, along with Black Spring Break. Uh, I don't know if they still call it Black Spring Break. Right. What the concept? Right. You did some things across that. How did that transcend what you're trying to bring together? Um, I was at, I was really blessed. Like I said, I've met mm -hmm. great people. Um, I ran and and I was able to bless to meet Keith Brown mm -hmm. and um, a great great visionary. Um, just 
mm-hmm. a, a tremendous vision, mm-hmm. um, and you know he spits off ideas like right, right. you know in, yeah. in seconds. And so when I got involved with that, I saw the possibility mm-hmm. for there to be multiple businesses mm-hmm. at one time right. over the course of one time, mm-hmm. and then more importantly, where people you know, black people can come and spend yeah, with one another right. and celebrate in that capacity. Um, around the same time, I was able to meet Tim Bennett, mm-hmm. um, who, you know, has done great things for the state and in the state of Mississippi. Mm-hmm. And both of them have been tremendous mentors in my in my life from a business standpoint and just teaching about what it means to build a business and to pursue and to go after it. And it also, um, both of those processes showed me the challenges and the difficulty sometimes of, you know, still in America just being black yeah. in business. <laughs> now you, uh, and of course, all the experiences, you know, with Spring Break, mm-hmm. um, with Tim Bennett and Keith Brown, mm-hmm. and also uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, right. a lot of those things have inspired you to write a book. Right. So can you tell me about your book? Uh, what, what, how did that originate? Uh, what do you hope to accomplish by people reading your book, uh, and how did all that come together for you? Well, I've always been a writer. That was one of the gifts that God gave me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I was 18 or 19, and I opened for Will Downing, okay. um, I, doing spoken word poetry. Okay. I wrote several pieces. I had and you know, just a really mm-hmm. good success with that early on. Got pregnant, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, my priority was to make sure that I took care of my son at that time. So I made some choices mm-hmm. as far as school and right. work and him and all of that. Uh, but writing was always something that was in me. Mm-hmm. Um, the topic was kind of, you know, sketchy, but I always wrote about community. I always wrote mm-hmm. about unity. I always wrote about, you know, current issues. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this, this world we live in, I've always had a, you know, my quest to God and my mm-hmm. question was always like, what is this? Like, if there's got to be something mm-hmm. else. It, this can't be by design. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I don't think things happen by accident. I think, mm-hmm. you know, my spirit was seeking for Dr. Miles Monroe, yeah. and, you know, and, and the Lord led and, and the keys and the yeah. for yourself and things right. like that. So uh, coming along um, Booker T. Washington, yeah. and as I began uh-huh. to just study yeah. different things, I, I just felt like there's a lot of information and a lot of wisdom out there. And before they begin to pass away in a Mm -hmm. conversational way um, thinks he came about you know when you talk about tea or you know if there's the thing that was going around you know get this tea you Mm -hmm. know this information or whatever usually referring Mm -hmm. to gossip Uh, so I I titled it think tea Mm -hmm. um, instead of you know some gossip tea Yeah, yeah. and it's drink from wisdom it's really just looking on you know Mm -hmm. those people that have had successes Mm -hmm. and the information that's out there to us and just some ideas that I believe from the Bible, biblically, mm-hmm. principles of community, working together yeah. to build. Now, only um, I know I know you you grew up pretty much in California. You've been here for quite some time. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the difference in for as community thriving economically in California yeah. versus them thriving here in Mississippi? Do you see a big gap uh, of that economical? system that needs to be in the community. What do you think about that? You know, and, and it's funny that you say that. I was actually this morning, um, my, my friend had a, a flat tire. Mm-hmm. And so we were talking along the way. And as we were going, I was, you know, going down the street and I was looking at a couple of the grocery stores, Hispanic grocery stores. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I began to think about um, California. Mm-hmm. And I would say, and I mean, you can tell me better than I can, but that the Spanish or Hispanic population mm-hmm. probably has only been here since Katrina. Right. Um, you know, in the capacity mm-hmm. that it is now. But there's furniture stores, there's grocery stores, yeah. there are already. Mm-hmm. And these are some of the things that the African American community still does not have or mm-hmm. has not built um, in the same capacity here on the coast. So why do you think, why do you think it's so, I mean, I don't, you're right, but I have, I, I, it kind of puzzles me that that we don't have, especially for what I know about North Gulfport and what I know about Biloxi. I have relatives in Biloxi as well. And what I re- remember about the black community, is it because um, uh, that the dynamics have changed 
and they have the big stores and they're allowing us to do more in other and other stores but still why don't we have that drive to be owners you know that's something that I probably spend a lot of time thinking about and it's mm -hmm. one of the questions that I I ponder quite a bit and, mm -hmm. and I think that it's a lot of a mental mm -hmm. and, and to be honest maybe a little bit systematic and by design okay. you know things are you know it's difficult there's information that's mm -hmm. it's kind of hidden and you got to yeah, jump here yeah. and jump there but I, I think the one thing that we lack that other cultures mm -hmm. have is the unity yeah. in working yeah. together because you have information yeah. that I certainly don't have right and you know your connections have information mm -hmm. that I don't have or someone mm -hmm. else may not have yeah but when we come together and then my strengths mm -hmm. and then you know you're playing in mm -hmm. your strengths mm -hmm. and in your roles and connecting the dots yeah as these other cultures have shown us which I think it's it's amazing I'm, I'm fascinated yeah. by it and how quickly it happens right. it's the ability to work together yeah um, I think it's what the you know what God tells us about studying the ants. Everybody yeah, plays right. their role. Everybody they, plays their role. You know, you go outside yeah. one day, there's no ant bed. You come out the next day, and mm -hmm. it's a <laughs> I You know, and another thing, there was three points that I, I heard in your conversation just now. Three points, and that is a system, and that is mental, and that is unity. Yeah. I think those three things are are vitally important because number one, uh, the system does not always. Uh, dictate what we should do right. and number two our mental thinking about what, what we can and what we can't do right. and the unity that we don't show we're trying to help one another but more than anything just going back to our mental thinking I think that we have been systematically groomed yeah. into thinking a certain way and systematically we have been groomed into division Absolutely. on many different levels so those were three important points and, and, and I think that how have that uh, impacted you to go forward to work with those three things that you know with the uh, with our people? You know, I reached a place where I felt like I didn't have a choice. I mm -hmm. had to um, come out of the cave, so to speak. Yeah, type, yeah. You know, I reached a place in um, my life where the least I can do is come mm -hmm. out and talk about it or, yeah. you know, to begin to share about it, to mm -hmm. myself make these relationships and meet mm -hmm. people and engage and be, you know, willing to stand forward and, mm -hmm. you know, I, I believe we already have a blueprint. Mm -hmm. We already have all yeah. of the resources that we need. We already have everything that we, um, that we need mm -hmm. and that the spirit is pouring. Mm -hmm. So some of those, that, that brokenness, that all of those things mm -hmm. are beginning to be addressed and dealt with. And now we we have to do kind of the hard part. And, and what we're doing is we're we're building a race. Yeah. Like Booker T. Washington yeah. said, we, we we really are looking. Even though we're so many years post slavery, mm -hmm. we really you know just time in time. Yeah. But in actually building the fundamentals and mm -hmm. defining our culture as African American, right. Black people in America, and what yeah. that looks like, and what our fundamentals are, and how we take care of each other. I think we're kind of just beginning yeah. that process. I really I've heard know. I've heard some people say that, uh, and I heard them recently that we really haven't grown too much past the Jim Crow era, or you know the, the segregation. I, I mean, I, I've heard it, and sometimes you may think about some situations. But do you think that's true that we've not grown, or do you think we're regressing? I wouldn't. I don't think that we are necessarily regressing. I think that just like with slavery, it was kind of like mm -hmm. you all are free now. Right. Go. Yeah. I mean, what does that mean when you yeah. can't read, you can't write? Mm -hmm. This is all you've known to be able to do. This has been yeah. your livelihood. These are the. Um, so I, I think, you know, with us, there, there's been God-given grace and gifts mm -hmm. that are given to us. It's amazing that we've yeah. gotten to where we are in right. such a short right. period of time. So I would never <clears throat> yeah. neglect or, you know, deny, like, we make mm -hmm. leaps and bounds. But I, I think in comparison to, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've not had the opportunity to really define mm -hmm. what you know, what What are things going to look like? And rightfully so. When yeah, you have a, yeah. a, a, a black Wall Street and you build in that capacity yeah. and we were doing that type of stuff and then what happened with that, you know, it's not something that you want to say, let me hurry up and do it again. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah and, and plus, you know, and that 
that uh, kind of like put a fear, put fear into people as well. And it's kind of like, you know, I have um, um, the, I, I love those teachable moments mm -hmm. that God give me and those teachable moments that God have. And one of the teachable moments that I had, uh, it happened this week. Because I had, you know, every now and then when I had a repairman or something come to the house, I had to uh, chain my dog up, you know, so mm -hmm. they can get to certain things at the house. Right. And so after I chained both of them, I have a male and I have a female, mm -hmm. uh, and after I chained both of them up, well, I went to the mail, I took him off the chain, he, all made, he uh, immediately started running around and do different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I went to the female, and um, I took the chain off of her. But I don't know if she was not paying attention or not, mm -hmm. or, or I didn't do it a certain way that right. I normally do it. So I walked away, mm -hmm. and she was still moving, you know, back and forth like she had the chain, chain on, on, because of that chain created a system that we talked Absolutely. about. Absolutely. And even though she was free, she was still operating in a system of bondage. That's right. And, and, <laughs> and so I think that sometimes, even though we're free, we still operate in a system of bondage. Absolutely. And, and, and that can come back to making us mental. What do you think about that, that, that type of uh, example I just had get, given? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, there's definitely a difference between deliverance and freedom. Okay. And, and just because you're, you know, delivered and, you know, the history has shown us that, the Bible has shown us <laughs> yeah. that, it's not mean that you're free. Right. And, um, you know, I, I believe that's why the word tells us that who the sun sets free is mm -hmm. free indeed. Yeah. That that freeing has to be spiritual. It has to be mental. Yeah. It has to yeah. come with the uh, renewing of your mind. Mm -hmm. And without that, you know, just like the dog, I, yeah. there's no chains on me. <laughs> but what, but yeah. I don't know what else to do but to be enslaved. Yeah. And in some cases, people resented the deliverance. You know, they, yeah. they, you know at least I was getting fed. <laughs> I knew what my boundaries yeah. were, you know. And so um, uh -huh. I, I think that that's where we were maybe, uh -huh. and where we're kind of coming out of. Uh -huh. But if we don't start pouring something into that, right, because you right. can't put old wine in a new wine vessel. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got to begin to put something new inside right. to build from. Yeah, that, that sounds absolutely good. But we're going to take a short break here in a minute. We're going to come back. We're going to, we're going to talk a little bit more about the economy, mm -hmm. where it stands now with African Americans. And so we're going to take a short break. Okay. And then we're going to come back and talk about that a little bit more. We'll be right back after this short break. Hello, this is Bishop Anthony Thompson from the Tabernacle of Faith Ministries. We would like for you to tune in to the Bishop's Roundtable on Saturday starting at 12 o'clock. We're going to have a good show lined up for you. It's going to be impactful. We're going to talk about economic development in the church. And we're going to talk about church growth and what you can do to help enhance your spiritual life. Once again, tune in to the, uh, the Bishop's Roundtable at 12 o'clock on Saturday mornings. For those of you that are going through circumstances, issues, situations, we got a message for you. Keep your head up. Sister Yolanda, tell us about it. Say you've been down and out and you're feeling all alone. Can't find no hope, no peace, and everything is going wrong. Don't have a friend you can call and tell all your troubles to. Mighty tough. 
Cause when the devil creeps in, filling your heart about things like there's no way out. Don't have a friend you can come and tell all your troubles to. They just came to, they, to they, work. They somewhere they made a plan. They got yeah, tired yeah. of mm-hmm. whatever it was they were yeah. going through, and they came over here and they didn't ask for, they didn't care who mm-hmm. looked at them or what anybody thought or whatever right. the case may be, and they worked together. Mm-hmm. And in the Asian community, it, their family game is so strong. You know, make, <laughs> yeah. you know, and yeah. this is whether they're related or, or not. not. They bring yeah. each other in, and mm-hmm. they have a economic system mm-hmm. to support one another. And it's somehow it's embedded in them. Yeah. It's second nature. Right. They know to do that. Yeah. And it's it's it it should be fundamental because how else can you keep your yourself alive mm-hmm. if you don't keep paving this road? Right. And then they also even with the Asian, I know for a fact that they get a lot of their material, like the hair and everything. Absolutely. They get it back from their homeland. Their homeland. They support their homeland. So they haven't severed that connection. Why have? Does it seem like we've severed? That connection from our homeland, which is our foundation, that that may be why we're struggling because we once we, you sever yourself, you know, from basic principle. What do you think about that? I would, and I mean, you know, and I'm I'm fairly young, you know, mm-hmm. and I try to have as you know as yeah. study as I possibly can, so you may be able to educate me in that capacity. But I wouldn't say that we did the severing. Yeah, you know, we were torn apart from, mm-hmm. you know, and even you know, the blacks that were already mm-hmm. here in America. Yeah. You know, everything that you knew about anything was was taken away from you. Right. And then for so long, so I don't know that that's what this, you know, yeah. you, you've yeah. been taught what somebody has told you about who you are. Yeah, place absolutely. 
And yeah, that's uh, a true fact. Yeah, yeah, and more information comes forward. And then the images that are put up about Africa, it don't look like nothing. You want to go back and part. <laughs> you know, yeah. The, you know, the, the flies and the bellies. Yeah, and, 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 you know, and the lions. And the lions and the bears. <laughs> Don't look like you. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, yeah, like yeah. they was wrong for that, but I'm not quite <laughs> sure that. <laughs> I wanna, yeah, you know, and that was I've not been to Africa, so yeah. I can't say, you know, I, what I had was the uh-huh. the images that were placed right. before, and so we're struggling to put together this identity. And I can remember going, yeah. I didn't see. Um, that's why I love this community. You know, mm-hmm. early on, the stores, they had different, yeah. you know, and they were black. This is where I was mm-hmm. able to see me, yeah. you know, and be able to relate to it. And then over the years, that, mm-hmm. you know, kind of disintegrated. But in California, it wasn't like that. And my expectation mm-hmm. as a little girl was that, I mean, he owns a store, but yeah. he does not, you know what I'm saying? Right, you, right. you grow up fundamentally. So I don't think we... Mm-hmm severed our relationship maybe we haven't put the work or the effort in into mm-hmm. discovering what that right. is and working together to bridge that gap yeah. but that you know these are the cards that we were dealt and now we need mm-hmm. to everybody look at their hand and see mm-hmm. how we can make you know win yeah. in this game and it's not even necessarily about winning up at mm-hmm. this point against somebody else it's about building right. for ourselves yeah I, you said something that was key uh, images Mm-hmm. You know, and I think, you know, especially when you look at scripture, mm-hmm. and it says casting down images mm-hmm. and everything that exalts itself mm-hmm. against the knowledge of God. I think imaging and yes. things that we've been shown yes. have uh, systematically programmed us to yes. think a certain way. Yes. Um, and I was having a conversation with somebody and they were saying something like, you know, well, if we see it on TV, we think it's true because uh, you by, know, design. by design, they show us certain things. Yes. Uh, and, and people don't understand how powerful imagery is. It was so powerful that God told us to cast those things down. Cast them down. And, and, and so can you weigh in on that little bit of images that may have impacted your life? When you had an image when you was in California, now you come here, you see a different image. How do you bring that together and, and, and do something that Fallon has in mind for what she's experienced? Yeah, it, um, you know, images are, you know, those are, are our reality. Yeah. And so when you're a child, if you grow up in any, you know, psychologist or whatever, and this is what you see, that becomes mm-hmm. your reality. Mm-hmm. And so um, I don't even watch television. I'm pretty sure. Like, okay. I, I don't, um, I don't, I don't participate in it in a, in a lot of ways because it, you know, it's a programming of uh-huh. your mind. I, right. And ask any advertiser. It's big money. Yeah, it's big money. Yeah, it's, it's big it's money. very yeah. real. And yeah. what you put before a person can make or break them. Mm-hmm. And so think about your history book. I don't know what, you know, what the, you know, mm-hmm. but I didn't learn about Booker T. Washington. Right. I didn't learn if I had Rosa Parks and Martin Luther King. <laughs> you know, and that was about uh, this struggle or yes. that. Yeah. You know, so the things that you learn and the things that are placed before you, it has to mean mm-hmm. something. Yeah. And, you know, if you want to sell somebody alcohol, you're going to put somebody attractive right. Right. or perceivably attractive. And they just find what, yeah. you know, it's been yeah. defined what attractive is. Mm-hmm. Even though you don't see people that look like that nowhere near you, but yeah. you see it on television yeah. and it's real or in the magazine. So it's about what you get value to. So we value celebrities. Yeah. We value, you know, certain cars. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. value certain uh, things mentally. So yeah. You probably you've never had any of right. these things. You don't know if they drive right, don't drive right, or if it's good or not or whatever. Yeah. But somebody, that image has It's the image you. that they put out there. And I think a lot of time that image um, is systematic to put into place. Mm-hmm. You know, take for instance, um, and, and I've, I've seen some people, as a matter of fact, I got a chance to experience that by, about a couple of weeks ago, about the white baby dog and the black baby mm-hmm. dog. Um, I was in Walmart parking lot, and I seen a little white girl, and she had a color, or a black baby dog. Mm-hmm. And I said, that's different. That's you different. Know, because, and then, you know, you look at the cowboys, mm-hmm. and when the cowboy was bad, he had on a black outfit. Right. And the one that was good had on a white outfit. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I think that sometimes, you know, sometimes we want to say, oh, that's a little far-fetched. It's not, they don't think that far. It, but sometimes you don't know the links that people will go to to program somebody. I heard somebody say something about one of their children years ago, and they was they said, well, I thought I had programmed him by now by feeding him information, by right. telling him things. And so you think that the, our program, have to, we have to be deprogrammed before we can really go to another level of what? I would I would say so. We've got to, and I think a lot of that is happening. You've got the natural hair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, you've got people falling in love with, you know, this is what I look like, and yeah. it's, it's not only is it okay, but it's yeah. better than okay. <laughs> and um, you can save a little money too. <laughs> it's <certainly good. laughs> um, you know, and so I, I think that the, you know, we're beginning mm-hmm. to put images, our images, mm-hmm. in front of ourselves and say that this is, mm-hmm. um, this is good. Mm-hmm. And when you think about other cultures and, you know, from uh, Mexicans to mm-hmm. Asian mm-hmm. Or, or however you want to put it, they don't come here and try to become American. No, they don't. They do they not do come not. here. They dress no. like they want to dress. Right. They dress like they still back at home. They mm-hmm. don't care what mm-hmm. is popular here because they didn't come here mm-hmm. to necessarily be American, whatever that means. Yeah, yeah. They came here, you know, for the opportunities mm-hmm. that are here. And so, you know, we They came for the opportunity. opportunity. Not to be an American, but they came for the opportunities that are here. That was key. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I believe that. Yeah. You know. So, I, I know that I had some numbers uh, a few years back about the state of the African American economy, mm-hmm. which was 1.2 trillion at that mm-hmm. time, and I think you have some newer numbers, mm-hmm. uh, 1.6 trillion that the African American spend into the economy. So, with those numbers in mind, we're spending a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So, what do we do to change our economy? Uh, in your mindset, what should we do to get some of those dollars uh, into our community? Because I know that's one of your main concerns is building black commu- uh, communities economically. Right. So part of that is that the, a dollar stays in the black community for six hours. Mm. And when you put that in comparison to the Asian community where it stays for 30 days, mm-hmm. or in comparison to the white community where it's 25 days, mm-hmm. and the Jewish community where it's 45, and the <coughs> Spanish where it's all these. Yeah, yeah. So the dollar doesn't even stay a full, like, life, a full daylight. daylight. <laughs> you know, yeah, so it's you, gone. And you don't get 12 yeah. hours out of it. And so, but then when you look at that on the flip side, If you were, you know, if you've got money right now and you want to ride down the street, where are you going to spend that dollar with somebody Mm -hmm. that looks like you? Yeah. Like, if you need it, you know, even just your your fundamental basics, those Mm -hmm. options or those images are not put before you Mm -hmm. as far as where to spend that money. I think we are, you know, kind of that instant gratification. Um, It. You know, it's nice to feel good. You want to feel like you, mm-hmm. your accomplishments are visible or mm-hmm. can be seen that you've, you know, made it, so to speak, or, you know. And so taking the time to be able to say, you know, I'm going to drive 10 miles that way right, so I can make right. sure that I spend here yeah. and there. And I think we're getting better at that. You know, you've got the social media community and, and all of that stuff where you can spend in e-commerce mm-hmm. and all of that. But we've got to get to a place where we have brick and mortar buildings, buildings physical, yeah, right, you right. know, and it, it's not even, there's no question, I'm going to go over to, you know, Anthony's mm-hmm. and, and buy my groceries. That's so what do, you, what do you think the start point is? I mean, we, I, I think, with me, I think education is so important. I mm-hmm. think that, not only that, uh, with the image that have been put up about investing in those stores that you say people they put the image up and they do a good job mm-hmm. with commercials mm-hmm. um, but another thing that I, I see is that even when it comes to the church mm-hmm. you know you'll see where they have uh, people are not taught to invest in the church anymore they're mm-hmm. not taught to tithe they're not taught mm-hmm. to give those things and then also they have um, where they will give their money to other areas and they won't give it to the church mm-hmm. and that's an investment piece that we're looking at as well. So therefore, I mean, you, you've taught, they've taught them how to invest in the kingdom of God and, mm-hmm. and how do you think that impacts us? And I, I think part of it is 
um, a lot of small local churches' responsibility, too, mm-hmm. on that, that it's pulled people away. Because the church should be the number one owner in mm-hmm. any community. Right. Of buildings, of land. Absolutely. Of, Absolutely. Of, they of should be. like that. Yeah. And so I think that the churches stop short of executing mm-hmm. the word. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, the, the church has to bear like mm-hmm. responsibility in that and I, I think when we're talking kingdom it 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 has to be community. Yeah. It has to be about that that outreach. And so and, and when I say outreach I mean about that building. So right. this area should be owned. Yeah. By you know, the church. And then the yeah. members there that you know, that store there, that land there, all of those things mm-hmm. we have to go beyond, you know, we've been doing the same thing for far too yeah. long. And you know, and, and with that in mind, when I heard you talk and I was saying, Dog man, she's talking the same thing in our principle that we have that we're trying to do in the community. Mm-hmm. And and so um in, in closing, you know, I want us to tell us I want you to go ahead and, and tell us what to expect in your book. Mm-hmm. Uh tell us the name of it. Mm-hmm. And of course I know for a fact that we'll be seeing some more of Miss Fallon. <laughs> Uh, and, and I can brag about the point that yeah. we're we're related. Yes. <laughs> so you know we're related. So we got yes, that we kick. Are. You know, uh-huh. got that blood. <laughs> um, and uh, tell us something. You know, the, what to expect in your book and the name of it and uh, how you how soon you expect it to be out. Okay. So I'm uh, six months is it should be out about uh, January the okay. first of the year. Um, the book is uh, titled Think Tea, Drink Some Wisdom. Mm-hmm. And you're going to expect a lot of the, the fundamentals that come from Booker T. Washington. Okay. I can say that. And, uh-huh. and principles like that. Um, just conversational and who knows, like people mm-hmm. like yourself and mm-hmm. things like that. Just talking about this. Mm-hmm. What what can we do? You know, where we were. Not so much as that, but, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Let's, let's have this little tea. Yeah. And, and, and talk about yeah. progress. Yeah, that sounds good. And once again, this is the Bishop's Round Table. Uh, we're going to be airing Saturdays, like I said, at 12 o'clock. We're going to have some great guests on. And most definitely, we're going to have Fallon back on again and looking forward to some things that, uh, some progress that you're, and some of the work that you're doing here on the Gulf Coast. And we're going to be talking about the state of the African American uh, economy. We're going to be working on a conference and making some things happen yeah. that, that I think that you can be a part of. And it's and I, I must tell you that, you know, the first time I talked with you and you began to talk about some things that you had learned, you know, uh, and one of the things that I thought about is how uh, out of tragedy God always being triumph. Yeah. It was out of the tragedy of the loss of your mother yeah. that God brought us together and our path crossed that, yeah. that we had the funeral here. And so from that... You know, I remember. I just think about how God does things. Except the grain of wheat falling yeah. to the ground, it abides alone. But if it falls to the ground, it produces more fruit. And I can see that what's getting ready to be produced by now. And I know that you love your mother dearly, yeah. and I'm quite sure that she's proud of you and what you're doing. Well, thank you. And you know, you're absolutely correct. I I, I couldn't um, imagine anything better coming from yeah. that. So. Yeah. 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 Once again, thanks for tuning in to the Bishop's Round Table. We'll see you next Saturday. And we hope that you have learned something today. Thank you. Hello, this is Bishop Anthony Thompson from the Tabernacle of Faith Ministries. We would like for you to tune in to the Bishop's Roundtable on Saturday starting at 12 o'clock. We're going to have a good show lined up for you. It's going to be impactful. We're going to talk about economic development in the church. And we're going to talk about church growth and what you can do to help enhance your spiritual life. Once again, tune in to the, uh, the Bishop's Roundtable at 12 o'clock on Saturday mornings. Thanks for watching Bishop Roundtable with your host, Bishop Anthony Thompson. Bishop Roundtable is a production of Kingdom ICDC, ensuring positive development on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. Once again, thanks for watching.